Tonight, 14 beams of light are illuminating Montreal's skyline, marking one of the darkest moments in Canadian history. It was 25 years ago that a lone gunman walked into Montreal's École Polytechnique, professed his hatred of feminists, and killed 14 women. Today, the city is remembering those women who lost their lives. Good evening and thank you for joining us. For the survivors of the Polytechnique shootings, the emotional wounds of that day are still raw. Tonight, we hear from one woman who was shot four times. And as Paula Samuel reports, she's trying to turn that attack against women into a positive support system for them. It was a dark, snowy afternoon in Montreal on December 6, 1989. Engineering students at Ecole Polytechnique were nearing the end of their day when a nightmare began to unfold. The worst mass murder in Canadian history appears to have been triggered by the suspect's hatred of women. A crazed gunman burst into a classroom ordering the male students to leave. He then began a deadly rampage. Fourteen women were murdered that day. It was the day that changed my life forever. And uh, now I'm, I'm built uh, with that inside of me. Nathalie Provo was one of the survivors. For 25 years, she's carried her scars, both physical and emotional. Mark Lippin really tried to kill me. I was shot four times. Provo doesn't know why she survived, but has a heart-rending theory. If a God exists, I think that he tries to protect my parents, my families, because I lost a brother six months before December 6, 89. And I think that for my parents, losing two kids in a year would be too much. So in a way, I always have the feeling that I was protected by my brother. And although each anniversary of that fateful day has been hard on Provo, this one seems especially poignant. That's an, an anniversary that say out loud that we will remember, but that we are, um, we are looking into the future with it. We want to have new projects and we want to fulfill dreams in the memory of those who died. With that goal in mind, Provo helped found a new project at her alma mater, the Order of the White Rose, a $30,000 scholarship created as a tribute to all who were at the heart of the tragedy. Polytechnique say to the world, something awful happens in our wall. We are very sad. Some, some of our girls died because of that even. And they had dreams. Paula Samuel, Global News, Montreal. Well, just a year after a devastating typhoon killed thousands and displaced millions, Filipinos are once again bracing for the worst. Another powerful typhoon is barreling its way over the island nation. More than half a million people have fled their homes. As Vashi Capellas reports, Filipino Canadians are also praying that another disaster can be averted. Typhoon Hagupit pounding the east coast of Samar Island Saturday night, lashing rain, toppled trees, ripped off roofs, plunging the town of Dolores into darkness. Though it was downgraded from super typhoon status on Friday, the storm is still the equivalent of a Category 3 hurricane. Its swath 600 kilometers wide with gusts up to 195 kilometers an hour. Residents bracing for its impact. More than half a million have fled their homes, moving to higher ground and taking shelter in churches and schools. The UN says it's one of the biggest peacetime evacuations ever. We leave no stone unturned, so to speak, in so far as the preparations that are being undertaken in all respects. A lesson learned the hard way. Just a year ago, Typhoon Haiyan devastated the country. A storm surge 17 feet high flooded low-lying areas, destroying a million homes, killing more than 7,000 people. The international community eager to make sure history isn't repeated. Canada's finance minister, Joe Oliver, says funding has been set aside for relief efforts. Canada stands ready to support the Philippines if and when the need arises. Canadians with relatives in the typhoon's path are watching the situation closely. In Vancouver this morning, a prayer service. 
In Edmonton, Erlinda Tan is glued to online updates. Her family lives along the route of the storm. She lost contact with them for four days during last year's typhoon and is worried the same could happen this time. Now as we speak, I still have communication with them. Um, they're complaining that the wind is very strong, but they're okay. All eyes on where the typhoon heads next. If the storm stays on course, it's headed just north of Tacloban, hardest hit by last year's typhoon. It could land in Manila on Monday, millions of people in its path there. Vashi Capellos, Global News, Ottawa.